pretty much all medicinal mushrooms have really powerful immune enhancing and to varying degrees anti-cancer properties. But certainly all the mushrooms I've talked about on, on this channel and all the ones I'm gonna talk about in the future, they all do possess this immune modulating intelligence that really has a, a very powerful anti-cancer effect in, in many different types of cancer. Um, so the mushroom that I found today isn't really more potent in these areas than any others. Uh, but the reason why I'm sharing it is because this mushroom's actually, it's very widespread throughout the various continents of the world, but it's actually still quite difficult to find. It is actually quite rare. So this is Tremella foliaceae, which is also known as the, the birch jelly fungus or, or the leafy brain fungus that grows usually on birch, mainly it grows on birch, and it mainly grows from late summer into autumn, although it's actually, you know, like the depths of winter right now. You can see it's it's very, very soft and wobbly and jelly-like. Now, it's actually a parasitic mushroom in the sense that it parasitizes other fungi, so it's it's actually using other fungi and other mycelium as a host. This mushroom is edible, although I haven't actually eaten it personally, uh, but I have read that it's not, uh, not a particularly uh, tasty variety, but uh, you can, you know, you can eat it. Uh, if you're removing it from the tree, like all of the kind of, you know, the, the globules of this mushroom tend to be really soft and they break apart really easily so if you are removing it you really want to use a very sharp knife and just kind of remove it at the base here. Now it does have you know the kind of standard medicinal properties that you know you expect from a medicinal mushroom. Now it's it is rich in uh, immune modulating polysaccharides and it does actually possess very specific anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties now, extracts of both the fruiting body and the mycelium of this mushroom have been shown to be really, really high in, in certain polysaccharides that actually are specific in reducing the growth of sarcoma, which sarcoma is, is really a type of malignant tumor that really affects the, uh, the muscles and the bones and the joints and the, the connective tissue of the body. And we can see as well if we go around the tree that There is more. You can see it just breaking, breaking through the bark here. There's another bit there. And then more there. So, although this particular type of mushroom isn't exactly really common, it's not at all uncommon to come across a wide variety of different medicinal mushrooms in the wild that possess all of this kind of immune enhancement and these these anti-cancer properties and so it would be in my opinion a real uh, breath of fresh air if in all of this cancer research that's being done if people were actually you know raising a uh, lot of people raise money for cancer charities and cancer research and all this stuff and it would be i think a real productive and worthwhile step in the right direction to start funneling money into uh, the research of, of various medicinal mushrooms and the role that they can play in, in uh, the treatment of various different types of cancer. So, you know, from, in my opinion, actually donating money to people like uh, Paul Stamets Research Center, that would be a much more worthwhile investment in cancer research than it would be to just keep pouring money into the pharmaceutical industry where you know, in all honesty, the priority there isn't really healing. So, uh, you know, I, I think it would be a good paradigm shift that I do believe we're actually in the midst of right now to be migrating over more towards looking at these uh, natural substances that do offer up, uh, in, in pretty much every case, a much more um, potent 
anti-cancer immune modulating immune enhancing action than any of the isolated pharmaceutical drugs that people are taking though I don't for one moment think that people should start looking at all of these natural herbal remedies as any kind of cure or anything like that because obviously there's many many different causes and conditions at play when people are dealing with with a chronic disease or with a terminal illness so we can approach that holistically and naturally we can approach that nutritionally and herbally but there's also many other energetic factors at work and some of them are often somewhat kind of karmic in nature you know which is why we see some people that look completely healthy all of a sudden get diagnosed with a terminal illness and no matter what they do they can't seem to cure it uh, so there could be a kind of karmic level of involvement in, in, in situations like that and I also think that people you know a lot of people can heal themselves from these these chronic and degenerative terminal illnesses and that can also be somewhat karmic because I think it's part of our collective karmic path now to actually engage more in nature, to interface more with nature and to actually recognize ourselves as part of the ecosystem that we are residing in. We're not just this kind of tumor that's residing in our environment, just bleeding it dry of valuable resources, but we're actually a, a living, breathing component of this ecosystem. And this ecosystem is aware of, of me just as much as I'm aware of it. And once we migrate towards that understanding, I think we can collectively, in a karmic sense, actually begin to develop ourselves towards a much more sustainable uh, future and a much more realistic future for, for people to continue living on this planet. So, so I definitely think it's very much a worthwhile endeavour to even just cultivate a basic understanding of medicinal mushrooms and other wild medicines that we have growing all around us regardless of the climate, there's always some very, very powerful natural tonic medicines that we can have access to. And even if we're not wild harvesting them and actually hunting them out in, in the ecosystem, we can still develop a good foundational basic understanding of how these things are beneficial to us and how they're really a very, very important strategy for all of us now, moving into the future given the, the current state of the world, the current state of, you know, the level of synthetic toxicity that we're all being exposed to on a day, daily basis. So developing a basic understanding of these things is really very, very important, which really is, you know, why I kind of share the things I'm learning here and share discoveries I've made and just make these videos. So, yeah, while this mushroom's maybe not the most common and it's not really necessarily more powerful than any of the other ones I've talked about previously it is quite a, a good find it's a very interesting mushroom and I really just wanted to elaborate on um, the whole philosophy around doing this kind of thing really because this is just so important for everybody on an individual and collective level especially if we ever want to have any kind of autonomy with our health and any kind of self-reliance and ability to nurture and protect ourselves as a community.